Hi everybody, this is Blossom and today I have another tarot deck for you. This time the Guardian Tarot by Bess uh, Cylonen. I don't know how you pronounce that. I show it so you can see. Sorry, I don't know how you pronounce it. Uh, this is a deck by Schiffer Publishing. There we go. This is the box it comes in. So it's more or less, a, you know, it's not much bigger than the cards itself, which for some people that may be interesting. Then we, of course, have the cards and a little guidebook with it. Now let's have a look shortly at the guidebook. And um, ba -ba -da -ba -da. what is entering? So here we have the contents. What was interesting here, the introduction, where she says, I'm sorry, uh, the Guardian Tarot originated from an experience in 2004 with my then four-year-old son. As we were work, wa walking home from our daily stroll along a railroad track, he glanced over to see a tree standing in a small field. The stark, leafless limbs reached upwards, skeletal in an appearance, while the trees that lined the edges were full of leaves. Noting the drastic difference between the trees, he asked what had happened to the tree. I gave him some scenarios as to why the tree may not have made it from the past year. One explanation happened to be pollution, which led us to, uh, which led us to discussing while pollution came from, who created it, and so on. Later that night, I pondered our conversation as I watched the full moon rising above the field. The moonlight illuminated the drastic contrast of the living and the dead. I was struck by how the branches looked like arms and hands reaching for something just beyond the gnarled fingertips, while the living trees with their leaves shimmering under the moon reflected little points of silver light, whispering softly as the wind danced around them. In that moment, the correlation of how humans exist within the current, sorry, without the current times became very clear. As we pull our nourishment from a depleted source, we too also become, become depleted. We wither under the effects becoming less functional and unable to connect to our personal happiness and re rejuvenation when we find ourselves in a nourishing environment where our needs are met and supported by those around us we grow stronger and then she says unite uh, by bringing the two entities together trees and humans the guardian tarot works to unite and foster awareness to the importance between nature and ourselves promoting our own personal growth and journey there we go so this is her introduction so she, you know why she did this tarot and you have of course the explanation for each card um you have a little uh description of the card then the meaning the meaning a short a few sentences for the meaning and the same for a reversed meaning and then in the back you have still two spreads which will will come uh, to later. Now I bought this deck very quickly. I haven't seen it uh, on YouTube or anything, but I've seen but I've seen it on Instagram, and I only saw one image, and I fell immediately in love. The idea behind it for myself was I wanted a tarot deck that I can use with my OM, and this one <laughs> was really yelling at me, buy me. <laughs> So I'm normally not as quick and I want to see reviews or anything, but this is a not well-known deck um, as far, well, it's still possible. You know? I'm not always aware about everything. So, but let's have a look now at cards. So there we have the first card, the Fool card. I think it really gives you the energy of the Fool. Um, what I wanted to say before I go through, so this is not a deck that is based on the Rider Waite Smith Tarot, not on the Toth Tarot, and also not on Marseille. It's very intuitive, and um, yeah, some when you see some images, it's not 
you don't go into your traditional tarot meetings, tarot meetings all the time. Um, as I say, it's very traditional. It's, <laughs> you read it very intuitively. I do. You still can, you know, go on and um, include the number and uh, and the suit and see what you get out in together with the image. Here we have the magician, of course. Then we go to the high priestess. I really like how the titles um are in the cards so they are not they don't take too much space and they are kind of just really nicely integrated in them i give you some examples here for the divination meaning when this card appears in the reading it calls for you to manifest your higher self your god or goddess within that's why we see here the goddess and then also here again Then we have the high pre uh, the empress, sorry, and here it says, for example, as this card appears in reading, it is important to remember to always foster in others what you want to see grow into the future. This is how change truly takes shape and develops from the roots on up. Then we have the beautiful emperor card. I think this is really great with the waves here. Then we still see a face here in the stone. So it's not just the three people, the three beings, but we also see sometimes uh, faces in stone here. And it kind of looks like he would protect this one because the storm, you know. And here we have the Hierophant, Hierophant. And for the explanation, it says like, you know, when I say the explanation, I mean this, and here's the divination meaning. Rising above the mountains, the goddess within, and looking to the horizon, the Hierophant soaks in the beauty and, and awe of this world. She has become aware of the natural nuances and revels in them. That's really nice for the Hierophant card. Then we have the lovers. That's quite clear. Then we have the chariot and here we see he has runes here on his chest and it says upon his blade in the runic letter Tear, symbolizing protection, while upon his chest Gebo and Algis have been tattooed. Evas and Fehu appear on his right arm. Upon his left there are the runes symbolizing Tyr, the Norse god, uh, the Norse war god, and Ing, god of protection. Protected with charms and spells of old, he brings forth an old magic in times such as these. And then for the divination meaning, it says this card signifies that you need to face your fears, find the basis of such and address them directly. You have the necessary tools to do what is right in your arsenal. Whether it is to face that a love is now moving out of your life or to answer that call from your doctor in regards to your latest test results, you need to address that which you most fear. Understand that you can only fight and strive for a resolution when you know what you are fighting. No one has ever won a war against an invisible enemy. Hoo-hoo, <laughs> and that for the chariot. Oh, I love, I really love that strength card, so beautiful colors and we also see how rooted she is here on her mount. Really love that. Then the hermit card, <laughs> I really, really like it. Um, always looking out for the hermit card, of course. And when I first saw this card, I thought, you know, by, by, by becoming still and just sitting and find quiet and stillness, the real me, <laughs> my true self, is able to much to to is able to grow so much higher. And you know, it was just my first impression of it. Then we have the wheel of fortune, and this signifies the ribbon of time linking one moment to the next in our cycle of life. As this guardian watches over our progress through the various stages of our lives. Then the Justice card, which is very clear. Then we have, I think that's the only change. We have Suspend instead of the Hanged Man. 
And it says in the explanation, the guardian watches as his yellowed leaves are now ready to fall one by one. He is lost in a hypnotic trance and the ripple stands upon the water's surface as each leaf hits the surface. His concept of time has been suspended. That is a fantastic death card, in my opinion. I really love that one. Then we have Temperance, and it talks about the, the triple moon or trinity. She's aware of each stage of life and the influences which play upon us even before we understand ourselves. And it says when this card appears, it shows that we have some life lessons coming our way. Then we have the devil, which I find very interesting. Disguised in a floral beauty of apple blossoms, this deceptive guardian warns of accepting beauty that is only surface level. Look deeper to the heart of the matter or the person behind the mask. Then we have the tower. I think that's a very clear one as well. I really like the depiction of it. And we have the beautiful star card. And we go to the moon card. And it talks about how this guardian has left the plane of physical existence and prevails within the ethereal. And she has become a watcher of the winds, able to communicate to spirits of the past and to the living of today. And it talks about when you get this card in a reading that this guardian brings a message to you from another realm. Then the beautiful sun card, very clear, very, very sun cardy. <laughs> and then we also have judgment. Now, this guardian works as a somber reminder to reflect upon those who have crossed the bridge before us. Their energy, memories and moments live on within each soul that walks this world. Those who have altered the world and set the stage for all concursive events to happen remember them. As this card lies before you, pause for a moment and recall a person who has had a profound influence upon your life. Now ask yourself, why did they come to mind? How can their influence assist you now? Draw a second card. Lay above this one for their message. That's really nice as well. Then we have the world, the world card. And it says that this card signifies old ideas. But they no longer serve the world in which you are now experiencing. And then we go already to the swords. So we have... The Ace of Swords here, well, in the book it starts with one, so let me just, there we go. That's a beautiful Ace of Swords. Then we have the Two of Swords with the Phoenixes. As this card appears in a reading, this indicates that you are ready to evolve, to change and embrace each moment as the new you, as the new you emerges. The old you and old ideas are still lingering around and there is an element of balancing the two new selves until the time is right. You know, I just give you, um, I don't read everything when I read you something, okay? So you know there's a bit more in there. Here we have the Three of Swords. Then a very interesting Four of Swords. And then we have the five. The appearance of this guardian signifies that there is absolutely nothing wrong in grieving. Grief for the future that will never be. Loss of, loss of a loved one. A dream that has come to an end and needs to be put to rest. And then we have the six. Where you can see kind of more traditional thing with going away. Then we have the seven of swords, which is interesting. When this card appears in the upright, you are being flopped to by those around you. This is due to an overall sense that you are the one who will give advice with truly the best of intentions. They may or may not tell you the entire story, but you have the insight to know that people will only share the story that puts them in the best possible light. <laughs> then we have the Eight of Swords. 
And here it says, when this card appears, take a moment and reflect what influence have taken your attention away from issues that are more pressing. Then a grade nine of swords. And the Ten of Swords that I really like. I'm always looking out for it. Yeah, well, for the sword to, uh, so, to uh, well, for the sword suit in general, but I love the Ten of Swords. So, and here it says this cards acknowledge that there are times when we need to only share a small part of ourselves with others. However, when one becomes a different person to everyone. We became a fragmented soul. Time to bring those parts together and become one. But in the reverse meaning, it indicates that you are only sharing with people what you want them to know. And perhaps that is a good thing at this time. I really like that message. <clears throat> then we have the page. And it indicates to take time to enjoy the simple moments in life, the planning and the adventures that await. Clear your mind of mental clutter so that you will be able to better soak in the pure sense of this moment. Then the Knight of Swords. I think the colors are really, really beautiful. Then the Queen. And here for the uh, explanation it says, With a faraway star gleaming in her eye, this guardian looks into the infinite night, glittered with undiscovered worlds and galaxies. She knows that even within our own cosmos there is much that we have yet to acknowledge. We just accept without question and without wonder simple things to the complex. Interesting. And then we have the King of Swords which is also again a beautiful card with the raven here. Then we go into the Wands. The Ace with the two birds. All things takes work and collaboration from a unified team. When this card appears, it means that your team is ready and willing to help you build your future with a solid foundation. Remember to communicate your ideas or changes that you would like to see happen. That's interesting for, you know, for the Ace of Wands. Then we have the Two of Wands, which reminds you more of the traditional or the Rider Waite Smith. Then we have the Three of Wands and the number four. And here with the five, it's kind of a bit of sad. And it says the prior passions that once ignited the soul no longer are sufficient to, sufficient to inspire. The basis of this card is to have gratitude in all that has come before. Without that experience you would not have come to where you are now. At this time recognizing that which does not fan the flames of creativity and passion will need to be redefined. Then we have the six and he talks about a shift that is happening and it, that is time to pull away from security that has grounded you. This one is really beautiful as well. And it says here, you are ready to move forward to embrace a new level of self-awareness. This card simply lets you know that your ancestors and spiritual animal guides have literally got your back. And the Eight of Wands. And the Nine. Sorry, there we go. And here it says, when you when faced with this card, you are going to need to find a way to communicate in a calm manner, regardless of the level of anger you have towards the situation. And that we see with a bright red color, you know. Then we have the Ten of Wands, which is normally, you know, um, a burden. And also here it says, this card may indicate that you are imprisoned in your responsibilities by the need to survive and so on. This is a beautiful one, page of ones. I really like that. I got that already a couple of times. Then we have the Knight of Wands, which talks about that is a time of burning away the old to enable the growth of the news, of the new, sorry. <laughs> now we have the Queen. It's a fantastic one. And she calls forth the inner divine to assist in showing the light of a new past. 
And then we also have the king, and they both have those uh, those uh, circles. Sorry, I don't know the name. And for the king, it says, as this card appears in the reading, consider for a moment the state of current affairs in your life, both positive and negative. The end result for each can alter vastly depending on upon how you choose to see the situation. And then we move into the cups. And this would actually remind you somehow where it did me, sorry, uh, more of a two of cups. But you really have to put aside the uh, Rider Waite Smith. <laughs> then we have the Two of Cups, which still presents somehow the Two of Cups for me. And this is very much about healing. Then we have the Three of Cups, where we still have the three um, tree people there. And the explanation or the divination meaning is quite simple. It's one sentence. Life is an adventure. Live it without remorse. <laughs> Then we also have the Four of Cups and we see the boat in the background and he's, you know, he's figuring out a map here. And it says, this may be a time when a chance meeting turns into a life-altering event. A dream job pops up on a job search or even just being at a particular place at the right time to change the life of another. Interesting, because that's usually not the Four of Cups, you know. Then we also have the five, and for example, just here in the reversed meaning, it says this card indicates that you will hear things in passing and rather than dismiss them, pay attention. There is something tucked away that you will need to be mindful of in the future. Then we have the six of cups, which often talks about nostalgia or something like that. This guardian pauses for a moment. She reflects upon the physical and spiritual realms that influence her past decisions and brought her to this moment. Now, then we have the Seven of Cups, which is very interesting as well. Uh, this card signifies the structure of personal belief, whether you need to have belief for human kindness, compassion or simple goodwill. This guardian is here to let you know that it does exist. And we have more often somewhere a church um, in those cards. Here's the Eight of Cups, which I really love. Then the Nine, there we have a church again. And the Nine of Cups is usually like the wish card or anything. But here we have somebody who looks over you. And we have that church and we still have the, um, the sign the signs here and it it's gives you more the idea of that you have to make a decision but somebody is watching over you but it can you know I had this card in, in another reading that I, I think yeah there was a YouTube reading <laughs> and it meant something completely different you know then we have the ten of cups as this card appears it signifies that you are ready to press into the unseen you know your goals and know the commitment you need to make to yourself Celebrate the spiritual growth and work that you have developed that have contributed to make this moment come together. And then we have the Page of Cups. Again, it's really beautiful colors. Then we have the Knight. This is, ah, I love that one. <laughs> I really love that one. The, let's see, as this card appears in a reading, it indicates that there is more than meets the eye to the strange feelings of late. Explore the feelings, listen to them, follow them. They should be given special adherence as it will help guide your journey. Interesting. But like I said, I really love to read them intuitively and I just give you a few examples. Well, apparently I'll give you more than a few uh, what is written in the guidebook so maybe you like that you really resonate with it or you know you just look at them and see what comes up so that was the queen then we have the king which is a lovely lovely card then we move into the pentacles here's the ace which is really beautiful very you know something is born here then we have the two of pentacles with the moon in the background Sometimes it is the hardest thing to accomplish to find balance between the magic and the tangible. 
the tangible offers a firm grounding in the world, a sense of security, the magic calls to the deeper parts of the soul and offers a connection to the universe. This card signifies that you certainly feel the push and pull. It is simply a matter of balancing the two lives together in perfect harmony. So true. <laughs> then we have the Three of Pentacles and there it talks about the ghosts of the past float through the mind of the Guardian. She is a significant reminder to raise your eyes. Remember those who have crossed your path. They each have brought an experience to your life, for without your life would certainly have been less meaningful. Interesting to have something like that, but on the other hand, the Pentacles, Three of Pentacles, it, of, it is often about kind of a teamwork as well, and we see that in a way too. Then we have the Four of Pentacles, and here it says, live by your truths, your grounding belief. And uh, we see again a little church here. Then we have the five. And here it says, hold on to the flame, even if it, it is an external inspiration that burns within, to carry you through the obstacles that seems to keep growing around you, each issue piling higher than the last. Keep true to your beliefs, and in each day, take a step closer to resolution and out of the current dynamics. Interesting here is still a face <laughs> than the six and it's just a reminder to treat all living creatures with the compassion we expect to have from others. Then we have the seven of pentacles, the eight, trying to go a bit faster but I love them, <laughs> and so the nine of pentacles, no, normally the, the card with the lady and the bird. And uh, here it says that it's now a time to not only appreciate the world, but to be aware of a higher source of knowledge and energy. So as you listen to all those uh, messages and what is written in the guidebook, it is also a deck very much for your spiritual path, for your higher self, if you want to. It's, it's a fantastic back for that. Then we have the Ten of Pentacles. Again, kind of a ghosty type from up there. Then we have the Page of Pentacles, which is absolutely lovely. Then the Knight of Pentacles, which is interesting as well. And it, in the explanation it says, this guardian embraces her fierce passion and emotions. Each moment has left their marks upon her most of which have healed. Only the deeper life-changing ones have remained visible. And then we have the Queen of Pentacles, beautiful card. And then also the Knight of Pentacles. Looking to the stars above, the Guardian King gazes back from the celestial plane. He beckons from the distance, a guiding light to expand your mind and be aware of opportunities that you are opening up to move along in your soul purpose. There we go. <laughs> Those were all the cards. Um, I hope you find them as great as I do. I absolutely adore them, but I would really like to see this deck more. Now, um, here the rest of the book as I... Maybe we zoom out a little bit. There we go. So there was not much more here ex except for the introduction. Uh, no, so um, then we come... I say that very often now. Then we come to the spreads. This one is a great one. Guardian's Tale. But it is a 10 card spread, so I'm not going to do that. And then we also have Guiding Coast to Coast spread, which is a 6 card spread. I'm probably going to do that one. And then um, Conclusion, thank you for allowing the Guardian Terror to become a part of your life. In working with this deck, I hope that an honest insight to any situation or concern has come to the surface to assist in your life journey. By having an open and candid reflection of the situation at hand, it offers a very direct opportunity to move through the moment with clarity and for you to grow as a person. Well, that's 
very very nice so i'm gonna try this guiding coast to coast tarot spread uh just to you know to show you how it reads or how you can read it and i'm gonna you know i'm gonna use the guide burger with with weight that you can see a bit how it's what her idea is about the cards but as i say it's such an intuitive deck and i think for your own personal journey for your personal growth for your spiritual growth for whatever i think it's perfect really i really love it and i can't wait to use it with my om so let's go to that spread now so the first card um, what do you need to appreciate and show gratitude to help ground you? All right, we have the Fool. Well, I don't want to really go into the guidebook for that one. Um, of course, we see the tree woman here. And she's very free and opens up. And uh, I think just... I. I need to appreciate that feeling again of being so open and just really have that full energy where you don't overthink and where you don't worry but you just do and you just be that wonderful feeling and by just allow myself to just be that will in a way ground myself it's weird to have the fool as a grounding energy but i do definitely get that message by finding that that joy again and to be so light of heart that this may help me to step out of my head and come into my body again and also my work with earth energy that is so important to me because yeah yeah because yeah <laughs> i can I am sometimes really stuck in my head when you have like earth energy and when you start to write everything down and with numbers and everything instead of just let myself feel it and just fulfill me the work I do there. So that's a nice message. So the second card number two is right here. Let me see. So there the question is, how can you utilize this current energy to be successful? And then we have the page of pentacles, which has at the first sight, of course, a very similar energy with the daisies. I got that card already in another spread. So how can you utilize this current energy to be successful? And again, it feels very much to simply be and enjoy the moment. Let's see what the guidebook says here. Well, here it says, you are right where you need to be and all things will work out on their own with very little worry from you. Take a moment and enjoy everything around you. So if I'm just not so fixated and just simply let it flow as well and use that, that page energy of newness and, and that sense of a childlike curiosity, this will actually help me to be more successful in my endeavors. The need to be more free in what I do. And may that be on my spiritual paths or also, also in my everyday life. I think that's really nice. Now the third card is right here, sorry. All right, so there the question is, what do you need to lay to rest with the setting sun? And this is the page of cups which i usually very love but i don't get um a page of cups feelings of that so she there is kind of a darkness but we also see the sun here actually a setting sun <laughs> and um and she turns away from from the darkness so it doesn't give me that the typical page of cups feeling and let's have a look at the guidebook. Okay, I take the reverse meaning now for it. So, in the reverse, these cards denote that the nightmares that should be dispelled with the rise of the sun are running amok in full daylight. You will need to dispel these fears, and they are just that, fears, not reality. Okay, that is really a, a nice message. Regarding to 
certain things I still want to do and where I feel that I kind of fail or not can get to the point where I want to, fear is actually the thing that holds me back. And it seems in a way very silly to me that those fears do hold me back because in a way it just seems that I'm very influenced by certain things that I really shouldn't and everything. It also gives you, you know, all those it's really time to step away from it feel this card feels a bit like it's suppressed and something that puts me down. Um and I that's not something very you know, it's nothing dramatic. But I feel through those things I'm not able to shine as I could. <laughs> and it, well, that's a very clear message. So what do you need to lay to rest? So those it is really time to Go, go away from that and not to allow that heavy feeling from the outside has way too much influence on my path right now. All right, um, then card number four, that's just above here. And here the question is, what do you need to remember from the past to help you in the future? And then we have the Eight of Pentacles. So that's interesting. Um, so in general, with the Eight of Pentacles, you know, we often say something about mastery or something, but for me it often signifies as well to do the same thing over and over and over again. And it's, yeah, I'm just thinking about now, you know, um, from the past, you know, maybe past mistakes uh, to don't do them over and over and over and over again. Let's, uh, let's have a look at the guidebook again. Um, life plays a cyclical song, always bringing us back until we have learned our lessons and gone a passage to the next chorus. Listen to the life song closely. It is playing the same part over and over again. What part of the lesson do you need to learn before you move to the next piece? So yeah, it, it kind of is. Don't don't repeat your patterns now. It's um, you know you. I actually kind of learned the lesson already, but I, in a way, I keep repeating that lesson, or I, I keep repeating. I I don't want to say it's really the the big mistake, but. There is a pattern that I keep repeating and yeah, really think about it, really come clear because in a way it leads me to this one where I feel so suppressed. Now, number five. Um, da -da -da -da. There we have, what do you need to be aware of as the future approaches with the rising sun? And then there we have the Four of Swords. So the Four of Swords is often about a kind of rest, you know, even taking a break from your mind. So but what do we have to be aware of? What, what I see immediately here is the, the rips that we can see on this tree being. It's like it's kind of a bit like the life is sucked out of him. So really pay attention also with how much I give away. This is actually a topic I'm very confronted with right now because I give so much of myself out there and I give so much but I keep, yeah, I feel, I feel very much drained. So this is something, <clears throat> sorry. <laughs> yeah, this is something that I really need to pay attention to, not to give so too much away for myself um, and take take better care of myself because because in a way also my mind is overworked because I do so much to give to others and I use of course the mind <laughs> to do so um, I, I do it more on an intellectual basis than on I give so much love out but this also drains me a lot and probably I just need, you know, um, to become very clear, yeah, so that the, the rest for the mind when we go, you know, from the classical, uh, from the traditional uh, right away Smith meaning, it is also the time when you 
really would have to focus on to uh, to gain <coughs> to gain clarity and also in a way you know clarity in the sense where where you have to where you need to set your priorities because yeah this is really an interesting card i like it because it's like this tree being would walk there the path and check that everybody is all right but he doesn't seem too too okay so now it really is the time to prioritize his own needs it's interesting sorry now you do quicker now so the last card number six dun, 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 dun. oh i've had that yeah okay what do you need to bring work upon to be successful and there we have the seven of pentacles and i had that already it's it's that opening up that another world is opening up and um, I should really put my work what I do much more into my own path now to that other realm okay let's have a look at the guidebook as well because I haven't read that even if I got it uh, before already so as this card appears, it signifies that your next path is opening up before you in a most profound manner through dreams, a desire to be in another area beyond the world you have known to date. Follow it. Yeah. And so now, listen, when this card falls in the reverse key, it is left to wonder if you are putting your dreams on hold for others. But in doing so, what opportunities are you dismissing from your life? What are you gaining by staying the course, which I talked here about? This really is a beautiful message. I, I really like that spread. I thought now it's kind of too general and I know that I'm... I talk it through a bit more general. <laughs> I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm sorry about that, but it's weird to do so many readings for yourself on camera, if you know what I mean. So every time I do a thing, a review or even with my spreads I do so many readings for myself on camera but you don't want to give too much away which is normal right okay so this was a beautiful reading and a beautiful spread I like that one but it will definitely try out the other one as well however so I really hope this was helpful and it's such a beautiful deck I really love it but it's energy and it's colors and it's ah oh, I, I really love that one and i would love to hear from you what you think of it because i've seen it well i've seen it only on instagram like i mentioned already i, I never saw it before and i think yeah <laughs> this deck deserves more attention i don't know i, do, I just feel very ah, i'm in love with it <laughs> Um, yeah, let me know your thoughts on it. Um, yeah. <laughs> so thank you very, very much for watching. I wish you a wonderful day. I really do. Much love and many blessings and bye-bye.